Good morning everybody. A very warm welcome to this Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board and at the moment I am broadcasting live across two or three different platforms. So no matter how you are watching this morning, you're very welcome indeed. You might be watching me live, in which case do pop a little comment uh, in the comments box. Um, I might not see all of them today. We've got a very busy demonstration uh, planned for you today. So my apologies if I don't see it straight away. I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can. Uh, if you've not tuned in to Technique Tuesday before, this is something that I uh, started actually pre-COVID and pre-lockdown, but it was always recorded and then I would put it out live. And then due to lockdown, uh, it sort of seemed a little bit better to go out live wherever it was possible to be able to talk to anybody who takes the time and trouble to tune in. And that's been going for over two years. Now, I've taken a bit of a month off. I took uh, the month of June 2022 off just to catch up with myself, really, which I'm not entirely sure I achieved, but I certainly uh, got closer than I ever have done. And so this is the first broadcast back after a little bit of a break, and it's lovely to be back. Um, I've got lots of news to tell you and I've got the start of a demonstration but one of the things I try really hard to do is to give everybody a bit of a shout out. Now like I said um, I've got windows open all over the place uh, on my computer which is just in front of me so my apologies if I just miss it but I will try to give uh, a shout out to as many people as possible. So who have we got in the room? Rosie is sending bonjour. Uh, good morning Rosie, lovely to have you here. Ali D, good morning. Anne, Maureen, Jan over there in lovely Wales. Good morning. Jeanette. Jeanette in Suffolk. Ah, oh, gorgeous Suffolk. Uh, Susie, Patricia. Patricia's saying it's so nice to have you all back. What a lovely sentiment. Um, who else we got? Joe, uh, just down the road. Uh, Martina, good morning. Uh, oh, Rosie saying missed you. Bless you. Uh, who else have we got? Barbara. Uh, Sue, good morning. Rabina. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Tracy, Linda, Trudy, Hilary. Uh, Simone, good morning. Long time no see. Uh, Joy, hello. Joe, good morning. Uh, another Jan. Angelica, Linda D. Uh, Karen, lots of you in the room. Lots of you uh, saying good morning. It is uh, just fantastic to have you all here. Not only because uh, you're saying good morning to me, but you're saying good morning to each other as well and that's what it's all about. Now that does uh, segue me very nicely into talking about the All Aboard Artists. Now the All Aboard Artists is something that I set up over 25 years ago and it was a bit of a shock to the system when I worked out that the All Aboard Artists have been going for 25 years. Now, it, the All Aboard Artists is an, uh, a community of uh, people from right beginners all the way through to professionals. We all come together. It's had various guises over the years. It's been in person. It's been um, at the shop and the gallery that I used to run. Uh, but recently, it's really expanded to being part of an online community. And 1st of July 2022 saw an enormous relaunch of it to offer as much as possible. Now, today's demonstration is part of that because what I've done is every month I set a theme and the theme has a bit of an, an overarch. So uh, July's theme is in the garden. And then all the members of the All Aboard Artists, right from free membership, just like Technique Tuesday is free, all the way up to what's called Green Gold Membership. Uh, you can access various things. You can access pre-recorded tutorials. You can access resources. You can have a live uh, tutorial. You can have a private lesson if you want to. So let's show you where you can find that information. I'm missing lots of people, uh, <coughs> excuse me, saying good morning as well. Who have I missed? Uh, Thea, good morning. Val, just down the road. Dee, good morning. Mum, you won't know her as mum, but Liz is in the room. Ah, Penelope says good morning from Australia. Lovely to have you with us, Penelope. Uh, Pippa, just down the road, right from Australia to just down the road. I should use that as a tagline, shouldn't I? Lots of people saying good morning to my mum. <laughs> Always good. Uh, Cheryl is in the room and uh, Ruth too. Now, where can you find the information uh, about the All Aboard artists? This gives you a little bit of an overview of what the All Aboard artists is. So it is that... Uh, uh, creative community and I have to say it does welcome all abilities it doesn't matter if you are a raw beginner all the way up to having lots and lots of experience of painting we welcome everybody into the group 
It's a very flexible subscription. So you can go from a free membership uh, all the way through uh, up to as much as you want to spend on your subscription with those six membership levels. So you have Zinc White, Lemon Yellow, Rose Madder, Cobalt Violet, Prussian Blue and Green Gold, unsurprisingly named after paint colours. We've got, depending on your level of subscription, we've got monthly challenges, pre-recorded tutorials, live paint-alongs and uh, any of the paid memberships have access to a Facebook group too. Now where can you go to find out more about this? Here is the Learning to Paint uh, website. So that's www.learningtopaint.co.uk. And then if you go over to learning, can you see it just there? And it says the All Aboard Artists. Let's give that a click and you can see the website page where you can read lots more about it. There's even a little video from me explaining a bit more, it goes through it in detail. You can see there all the levels of membership and what you get for your money. And if you want to read more about it, you can go over to those individual little colour stamps there, read more and sign up. So there we go. This is one of the things I wanted to show you. Here is what I've been talking about, that kind of overriding theme. So July, our theme is in the garden. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. So I thought what I would do start a demonstration for you. I'm not going to get to the end of it today simply because um, it's too big a project to do in one sitting. Sorry, excuse me, I've got to click around, so it's click, 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 click to uh, get things working. Um, and I thought we would use our All Aboard Artist theme, so that's in the garden. So what am I going to be doing today? I'm going to be using this photograph as my reference. Uh, it uh, was got from Unsplash, and if you look at the description of this broadcast you will actually see a link to this photograph it was found on that uh, royalty free website unsplash you can go and download it for yourself if you would like to i chose it because i was quite interested in the textures i was quite interested in the colors and that lovely glossy finish on top of those toadstools i want to see if i can replicate that not quite sure yet how I'm going to do it, but that is another uh, problem for another day. Certainly not today's issues. Um, so that is the reference that I'm going to be using. Now I have just missed a few hellos in the room. Who have I missed? Uh, Ruth, did I say good morning to you? I'll say good morning to you again, just in case I didn't. Sandy, good morning. Joy in Northampton, good morning to you. Tracy, good morning. Uh, Jilly, uh, saying uh, sunny and windy where she is. Heather, um, Heather's saying that she was late because she had to go to the tip and clean the car. That's very industrious for Tuesday morning, Heather. And uh, Jean is saying, uh, good morning, everybody from a cloudy Newark. Mm, I, I, may I wish sunshine upon you and Christine as well. Good morning to all of you. Right, should we crack on with this demonstration? Let's go to that overhead camera so you can see exactly what I'm working on. Now, here's my bit of paper that I'm going to be uh, using today. The link to all of the materials that I'm going to be using is over on the Learning to Paint Technique Tuesday blog. So you need to go back to www.learningtopaint.co.uk and there you will find Technique Tuesday and you will see uh, the blog that I put up every time I do one of these broadcasts. And there's a nice handy link to everything that you can find there. A good morning, Catherine. Lovely to have you here. Very nice to see you. So here's the photograph. Uh, I have printed it out onto just normal copy of paper. Um, I'm using a much larger piece of watercolour paper than my photograph, simply because I like to give my paintings lots and lots of room. Now this is quite, um, how shall I describe this, quite a full composition. Lots of toadstools going on, things going on in the background, there's texture going on underneath. I'm not entirely sure at the moment how much of it I'm going to include, but whatever it is that I include, include or leave out this piece of paper gives you plenty of space all the way around good morning Alice now this is a piece of Saunders Waterford watercolor paper 
There are two or three watercolour papers that I use. I use Milford watercolour paper. I use Hannah Mule's Agave watercolour paper. But today I'm using Saunders Waterford simply because I don't know where this project is going. And Saunders Waterford is going to stand up to anything I decide, any decisions I make. If I want to change my mind, then I'm going to be able to all of those kind of things. So this is, uh, let me just think carefully, 200 pound, 425 gram. So it's a little bit thicker than normal. Don't worry if you've only got something thinner than this, it will work absolutely fine. This is a not surface, N-O-T. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Denise. Um, and that means it's a Goldilocks version. So it's not too smooth and it's not too rough. It's kind of in the middle. Got a little bit of texture, but not too much. And it's what's called high white or possibly extra white. And I just like the, the whiter versions of things because then if the painting works out and uh, you know I like it and it goes on to become a greetings card or a print or something like that, then I don't have to do too much editing because when I photograph it, I'm not going to get a yellowy haze to the background. So that's why I use it. So I'm going to pop my black and white in the middle. This is just printed out on normal uh, printer paper, nothing special at all. And I'm going to stick it down because I'm going to do a transfer technique. I could draw this by hand. Good morning, Anne. Um, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do a transfer. Uh, so I'm going to have a little bit of framers tape here. Let's take some of that sticky uh, or dull the sticky a little bit uh, on my hand. You can stick it about your person as well. Tear it in two because I need two tabs. Let's just have a think about, I might push it up the page a little bit simply because I have a feeling that the texture down here is going to be the thing that interests me. So let's hinge it at the top there. There we go. Uh, why don't I put one bit in the middle? I put two bits up because if I only put one bit in the middle, then the chances are it's going to swivel and twist. OK, and then we're going to do a transfer. Um, now, lots of you will know and feel free to comment if you're watching this live about my hatred of people saying that what I'm about to do is cheating. I will let you lovely people out there um, educate others as to why this is not cheating. This is a shortcut, plain and simple. This is traced down in graphite. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this underneath. It's a little bit like carbon paper, but it's wax free. I'm going to slip this underneath my black and white and uh, do a transfer. Uh, Julie, good morning to you. She's popped up to say hello, but uh, she's got her grandsons today, so she's going to catch up later. Uh, of course, Julie, go and give your grandsons your full attention. So I've got a biro here. It's actually got uh, quite a fine point on this biro. It is this colour, which means that I'm going to be able to see it, but it's going to press through the paper just as much as I would like it to. So let's put some of these uh, fungi, these toadstools, uh, down onto the surface. And what I'm going to do is lift that up to make sure I've got my transfer, which I have, which means the pressure that I'm applying is about right and I've got the trace down the right way round, which is even better news. So let's get those toadstools in. Uh, I'm looking at the kind of edges which are a bit broken. I'm looking at those stems. Chances are that uh, things are going to change quite dramatically by the time I've finished with this, but we'll give it a go anyway. You've got uh, two or three fungi in the background here, which I'm going to ignore. I am going to do this one. Uh, over here so let's get that kind of lovely edge in these are just delicious I didn't quite get to the bottom of what these fungi are I should have found out shouldn't I if anybody knows if anyone is a fungi expert out there let me know what sort they are it would be good to know what they are um, I'm not really putting any of this texture in. I might put, they're on a log. Let's just show you the uh, reference again. They're on a bit of uh, old wood, a bit of rotted wood, um, a log or a branch or a fallen tree, something like that. Not quite sure, you can't really tell. But there's all sorts of other lichen and moss and things going on. So we'll put, I've put that little one in. Uh, do I want to put that? No, I don't want to put that one in. Um, what I try to do with these Technique Tuesday broadcasts is to think out loud. 
which is frightening for me and hopefully useful to you to know what it is that I'm thinking and why I'm thinking it. So at the moment, what I'm thinking about is how many of these do I want in? How is it going to affect the composition of my painting? Do I want odd numbers? Do I want even numbers? Do I want all of them? All of that kind of thing. But for the moment, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. Um, who's just popped up? Carol has just popped up. Good morning, Carol. I've been doing watercolour for a year, but I am a new student of yours. Eager to learn, love your techniques. Oh, Carol, what a lovely thing to say. Thank you very much. You are very welcome indeed. Uh, let's come down. Not sure about what's going on here. So let's do the things I do know first. Let's pop this uh, rather delicious, delicious, can't even say it this morning, shape in. Uh, I'm kind of after that sort of diagonal composition that's going on. Quite like that. I like the fact that not all the stems are sort of standing to attention. I like that we've got some movement in them. Uh, let's have another quick look back at that uh, photograph to see what we're dealing with. Hmm, interesting, isn't it, to, to decide what to put in and what to leave out. Now, you've got one down here. I'm not entirely sure that that makes sense, that one. So I'm going to leave that one out. But instead, I'm going to pop this little one in that's down here. So let's do that. Uh, where's the stem of that one? I have to look back because uh, your the colour version you're seeing is the same colour version as the one I'm seeing. I think there's a little stem here. Regardless, I can always alter that. And let's stick some of these in. Sometimes when you're drawing, whether you're drawing freehand or you're doing a transfer, and no matter what it is that you're playing about with, it's quite hard, isn't it, to decide what to put in and what to leave out. And sometimes it can really make and break your painting composition. So this is why I'm trying to, to do these things out loud and then hopefully it helps. Good morning, Lindsay. Lovely to have you here. Now let's have a look at it. When you use a black and white like this, you can still see everything on it. And sometimes what I have to do is I have to lift it up to see how disjointed it is. And it is at the moment. I've kind of got one group over here, one group over here, and one group here, um, which is a little bit uh, too regimental for me. So I do think I need to put some of these ones in the background. Uh, and then I can work on my log, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Pam has just popped up and said, Morning, Ali. I overslept. Oh, no. Thank goodness for catch up. <laughs> yeah, you can watch these Technique Tuesday broadcasts back as many times as you choose. The best place to find them, if after today's broadcast you're thinking, well, where do I go and find it now, is to pop back over to my website. So that www.learningtopaint.co.uk find Technique Tuesday in the menu and uh, then you'll be able to watch this and many many more demonstrations besides. They are kept free so that anybody can access them. What you will notice is on the website there are a few what are called affiliate links. So when I uh, recommend materials to you there's a little clickable link in there which uh, sends you to the right material that I've been using. And I have to tell you that I do get a little, a few pennies um, for you clicking on those links. And that's what keeps Technique Tuesday free to all. So if you were considering purchasing, purchasing any of the materials that I use, have a click on those links because your purchase of those materials helps me to keep Technique Tuesday free to anybody that wants to access it. Uh, right, I started putting in a little bit of moss. Um, it does look a little bit like they're on a hill, <laughs> has to be said. Uh, we may have to mess that up a little bit with what I've got planned. In fact, shall I call it a day there? It's always a bit scary, isn't it, when you're thinking, do I take the black and white away? Hmm, I'm worried about what's going on over here. It sort of ends a bit abruptly, doesn't it? But I think I'm good with that. I think I'm fine with uh, taking my black and white away now. So I'm going to peel that away very, very carefully. You can stick that. I have a little folder of uh, line drawings that I've done or photocopies of uh, drawings that I've done 
that I can keep for another day. So if ever you get a little bit of painter's block or you're thinking, oh, well, I really like to paint, but I'm not sure what it is I want to do. You've got them there so that they're ready to go again. Let's pop those things to one side. And then I've just got to wheel my chair over to one side because I forgot to pick up my pot of putty erasers before I started. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work back into this with a pencil. Now, lots of people say, yeah, Ali, what pencil are you using? Because I think it's really important. Uh, this is a 2B pencil, but it is literally a 2B pencil because I reached over to my pot and plucked it out. <laughs> um, I tend to use B or 2B, nothing too soft. Um, and I do like these Faber-Castell 9000 pencils. They sharpen really beautifully and you don't get uh, little bits of granulation in the lead. So they're quite smooth. Um, I have a pot of putty erasers. I have to keep them in a pot because one of my dogs uh, likes to chew them up a little bit like chewing gum. Um, and he finds it much harder to get through this than if I forget and leave my putty eraser out on the side. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the piece of paper a bit of a clean up, just in case there are any scuff marks on it. And then I can work back in with my pencil to have a think about what else I want to include. So this is the point of the procedure where I start to make some decisions about how I'm going to make these toadstools work. <clears throat> I'm not really adding anything to it, maybe a little bit of texture here and there. Um, what this does is give me the headspace to think, okay, maybe I could use this color or maybe I could use this texture. Or if it's for a demonstration, maybe this is the idea that uh, so-and-so would find really useful for their uh, painting style. It just depends. It gives me that tiny little bit of uh, headspace, which is good. Now, whilst I'm doing this, it gives me a chance to catch up with a, a few of your comments. Now, uh, Dee, the lovely admin that we have over on the Learning to Paint Facebook page has popped up and she's put Anne Candles. And that's making me chuckle because Dee bought me a very, very beautiful Christmas present, which was some um, fantastic um, uh, candle holders and beautiful uh, poured candles to go in them. And Troy decided, that's the dog that eats the putty erasers, that he quite fancied a bit of a treat one day. So he chomped his way through one of those candles. Um, I was not best pleased, as you can imagine. Luckily, not poisonous. Uh, so Anne is saying, I've had a quick flick through my mushroom book. Love that you have a mushroom book. But there isn't enough information from the photo to get a definitive identification. Oh, bless you, Anne. Thank you for the, um, having a look. Um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll see. I'll go back to the photograph and see if it actually says in the details of the photograph what they are. And uh, I'll have a look myself uh on the um little identification app that i've got because sometimes you can do it from a photograph rather than from a live subject matter but that's really kind of you to to have a look to see if you can identify it for me thank you very much so these toadstools need to be emerging from something and that's the bit of the procedure i want to share with you today Maybe I've made that log a little bit too um, kind of rigid. So I'm working my way through, breaking it up a little bit, doing a little bit of mark making to improve the um, composition that I've got. Ruth is saying maybe they're magic mushrooms. Maybe they are, Ruth. Who knows? I'm glad to say I wouldn't know one. <laughs> Ah, uh, dear. Right, this little clump of mushrooms, toadstools, however you want to describe them here, is going to be quite important. It's starting to link together a bit more now, isn't it? Now, uh, I know some people sometimes comment about how heavy my pencil lines are. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about that this morning. They're heavy in for a couple of reasons. They're heavy because I'm a mixed media painter. I'm not a delicate little watercolorist, although I use watercolors and will use watercolors for this. Um, and so if I want the textures and the lines and the mark making that I've done to, to show up underneath anything that I apply, then they need to be quite bold marks for me to see where I've put them. And the other reason I do it is from a teaching point of view. It's so that you can very easily see what it is that I'm doing. 
if I was making them very pale and wishy-washy, so if I was going to be doing a much more traditional glazing technique for my watercolours, then I would have to make my pencil lines a lot finer and a lot fainter. Um, but as if you know me, you will know that I am not that sort of painter at all. I tend to go at it, uh, as we would say down here in Dorset, a bit hammer and tongs throwing stuff at it, seeing what happens and pulling it back later. So I can afford for my lines to be a little bit bolder. Uh, now there's some discussion going on <laughs> about whether these are magic mushrooms or not, which is awesome. Awesome of a Tuesday morning. Um, but if you do know what these toadstools are, then uh, give us a shout. It would be good to know. Uh, particularly if you're watching on Catch Up, we might have had a chance to look back through um, if this painting works out and it needs a title, then maybe I need to know what type of fungi they are to be able to describe my painting. Now, this is what I was talking about in this composition. It kind of ends a little bit abruptly here. So I can use my pencil to work back into this end. You can see I'm making kind of scribbly marks. I'm not holding my pencil too close. I've gone away from the end of my pencil so that I don't have so much control over the marks that I'm making. I do get a little bit carried away with my mark making in pencil, so perhaps I should stop. But I wanted there to be a little bit of an S shape going on, a sort of a reverse S, which means I need to carry some of these textures a bit further up my page as well. Maybe we have a a few grasses going on in there. Who knows? Who knows? Now this is another reason why I leave plenty of space around my drawing because then I can add stuff to it if I wanted to. I could add another fungi there if I wanted to, but I'm not. I'm going to leave that alone. And then here's a handy hint for you that I, I haven't really shared with you before. This is the point where you want to take a photograph or a photocopy or a scan of your line drawing, okay? Because should something happen to this painting and it ends up that I'm not very happy with it or it goes down a different path than the one that I intended or the dog chews it up or whatever it is, if I've taken a photograph of my line drawing or I've scanned it or um, I've taken a photocopy, any of those kind of things, then I have that line drawing safe. It can go in the folder with your black and white version. And then if you wanted to have another go at it, you've, you've not got to start from scratch all over again. You can start from a more informed point. Does that make sense? And then that way you've got line drawings. You could take a bit of it. You haven't got to go through it again. You can do your transfer, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, there's handy hint of the day. Uh, if you are watching this live, um, please do uh, go over to Anne's uh, joke that she has just made. Um, she's saying that she'll get a coat. <laughs> I do love a joke for Tuesday morning. Okay, now what am I going to do to this? Let's have a think about the things that I'm going to do to it. When I was looking at the photograph, and let's get that back up for you, I was just fascinated not only by the colours in the toadstools, but also in those delicious textures at the bottom of the photograph. Can you see you've got a bit of moss, uh, a bit of lichen, there's uh, rotting wood in there, all sorts of things going on. And I loved the kind of the complementary nature of that texture, the smooth cap of the toadstools against all of that texture in the foreground. So uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I did have a bit of a think about what it is I was going to do and how I was going to do it. So let me introduce some materials to you. I'm going to pop this to one side just for a moment so that you can see the materials uh, come into shot. And I just need to put my board down flat, otherwise the materials are going to roll away. So the first thing I thought I would do is I would introduce some collage materials. Here they are for you. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. I'm not sure whether any of these are going to work, but this is where I'm going to start. So let me take you through these. This is a very normal uh, ball of wool. This is the type that I would use for crocheting. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut it into small amounts. Let's get some of those. I always tend to prepare more collage materials than I need. And I'm going to separate the fibres 
so that we get that kind of nice stringy quality to it. So let's get some of those. This is easier said than done live as well. I, I've got my good glasses on, so we should be okay. But you can separate them into the ply of the wool. doesn't have to be knitting or crocheting wool. It could be embroidery threads. It could be all sorts of things. I was just running around my house yesterday thinking, ooh, what could I use with this? So let's separate them into uh, sort of parts. Um, if you have any ideas of anything else that you could use for this, then stick it into the comments or stick it onto the blog. Um, but I thought that would be quite interesting. I'm not wild about the regularity of that texture, but I'm hoping that when it ends up uh, on my picture, then we might get rid of that. Now, this is needle felting wool. Um, I've, as you can imagine, every craft I have the kit for. And I was thinking about that kind of lichen, that moss, and not as formal as wool, but something in between. So I'm going to use a little bit of this. I have a feeling that sticking this down is going to be quite a challenge, but nevertheless, we'll have a go because it's always good for you to see. So we'll stick that away. I'm using, uh, I don't think I need it to be that long, I'm using plain colours because then I can tint them. Um, if I was using, if I wanted something uh, a little bit stronger, I might choose very specific colours. Now I'm trying to cut these uh, so that they're not sort of straight across, like I've given them a bad haircut. Uh, Trudy is saying printer scrim. Yes, absolutely. Rosie is saying scrunched cling film. All of these things would be worth an experiment, wouldn't they? Um, I'm going to sort of mess about with these. I think that the, the um, textures that you use for collage are very much a sort of in the moment decision, aren't they? In a what shall I use today kind of thing. Um, yesterday, this is what I came up with. And then the other thing I'm going to use are these, which are skeleton leaves. These, um, any of the things that I've been talking about today would be available from any kind of craft retailer. Um, use uh, recycled materials wherever you can. I tend to go back into my craft stash because I have all these things. Uh, skeleton leaves, very, very common to find. Um, again, I'm using uh, uncolored versions of them so that my color that I apply tints them. I don't necessarily want them to look this perfect, so I am going to, it seems a bit of a travesty, doesn't it? But I am going to kind of rip and tear them apart. This is, we're kind of dealing with woodland floor, aren't we? So any of those sort of fallen leaf shapes might be interesting. So let's go back to this. Well, that one's ripped itself, which is always good. Let's get rid of the stringy bits. So I've got lots of bits of collage. I won't need all of these. I always rip up more than I need because I'm never quite sure where it is I'm going to put them. So uh, these are going to go just slightly out of shot. So I've got my skeleton leaf pieces there. I've got my uh, torn and cut up uh, needle felting wool and I've got my crochet wool there. So I'm putting them just at one side. Uh, and then what am I going to use to stick them down? I've got a palette here. This is a ceramic palette. I tend to use ceramic palettes because uh, then I can stick them in the dishwasher and they clean up uh, far more easily uh, than plastic ones. And this is what I'm going to be using to stick them down today. Uh, this is uh, an acrylic medium and this is designed to be used with acrylic paint to interfere with it or to make it have different properties. This is a matte medium, which means you can take um, your acrylic paints and mattify them so that they aren't so glossy. Uh, now, what's Joe saying? The way you the way you cut your needle felting wool is the same method I cut my fringe. <laughs> I feel for your fringe, Joe. Uh, the matte medium that I have in my hand, like I said, is an acrylic version. It's something that you use to interfere with acrylic paints, but turns out it can be rather a useful glue too. Now you might have PVA glue, which is fine. You just need to add a little touch of water to it. You might have Pebio's Bindex, which is a perfect consistency, or you might have some of this. It doesn't really matter whether it's gloss or matte. I just uh, choose to use matte because then I'll have um, a nice kind of flat surface. I know the camera is um, kind of crying because I'm using white on white, but let's uh, 
let's pour a little bit of this out. <laughs> this is going to come out in a rush, isn't it? Oh, come on. There we go. Almost there. There we go. A nice, uh, generous blob of it. It does have a nozzle uh, on the top of this, which you can use, but I just chose to, to take the lid off. And then we need a gluing brush. So I've got an old uh, gluing brush here. Uh, this is, I have no idea where this brush came from. It is full of glue as it is. I've got a pot of water just over to my right hand side. And I've got some uh, kitchen roll as well because there's a very specific technique that I use for sticking my materials down. So let's get a piece of that ready. So I'm gonna pop these things slightly out of shot uh, just so that I can set my painting back up again. Sorry, head in shot, very unprofessional. Um, I could, just couldn't see where I was going. And let's get that piece of paper back in and have a look at where we want those textures to sit. Now I want them down here, but I do want to push them up amongst those toadstools as well. Because if you put all of the textures down into a block, it will become a painting of thirds. So you'd have your background, which will be one texture, your toadstools, which will be another texture, and then your collage, and it will be a little bit rainbow-like, won't it? It will sort of go in bands, and I really don't want that to happen. Now, I'm going to start off with my skeleton leaves. So what I'm going to do, this is the same technique I use for all collage materials. doesn't matter what it is. This is a, a method that I have found works. It might work for you, it might not work for you. Whichever way you can get them down is fine. Now, this matte medium needs a tiny touch of water to get it moving, which is fine. It goes a little bit blobby when you first attack it, but you can thin it out and you can get it to a nice consistency. And then down here, let's think about where I want these skeleton leaves to be. Uh, I'm gonna put a layer of glue then a bit of skeleton leaf down into that layer of glue and then some of the medium over the top. That's a little bit skew with Ali. I know I said I don't want it too symmetrical, but there's sort of drunk <laughs> and putting it down properly. There we go. Then it has a layer of glue over the top. I'm going to pop another one into there just while I think of it maybe to kind of intersect it you can send yourself absolutely bonkers uh, thinking about where you want your collage materials to go and how you want them to lay down uh, maybe that's a demonstration for another day let's get this part in this has got a bit of a stem on it so it's going to be a challenge to stick down but i'm going to do something else to it in a minute and uh, Ruth is asking, uh, can you use what I'm assuming she means is Modge Podge as glue? Um, a little bit of a typo there. Yes, you can. Modge Podge, uh, Bindex, Matte Medium are all very, very similar. Tracy is asking, what is holding uh, your paper to the board? I have got a non-slip mat uh, on my drawing board, this thing, which means that my paper doesn't skid down the surface. It's like magic. So I put the glue down, I put the collage material in and I, then I've put glue over the top. If I allow that glue to sit too much over the top of my collage material, so if I let it dry, it will dry with a weird kind of halo around it which might repel my colour. So what I do is I wet it and then I use my kitchen roll to blot up the excess. That way we're not sort of sealing the paper. So let's repeat that process. Picking up a little bit of my matte medium, Bindex, PVA, Mod Podge, any of those kind of things. Uh, and I think, oh, I've got my skeleton leaves are shedding left, right and centre. I think I want another bit of skeleton leaf up here. Should we try that? Why not? Don't overthink it, Ali. Practice what you preach. Whack it down. Don't give it a second thought. Now, the question is going to pop up, or I assume the question is going to pop up, are you trying to avoid your toadstools? No. Uh, I'm not thinking about that too much at the moment. I don't want my uh, toadstools to be devoid of texture, otherwise they will look a bit odd and they will look isolated. So I'm not overthinking it at the moment. 
There you go, mopping up that little bit of excess glue. Right, what next? What should we do next? Let's go on to the wool. Uh, so I'm not sure, I'm not really sure what I want to do with this, if I'm honest. Um, let's just try and see if we can get it down and manipulate it into a few linear shapes. That's what I think we're going to do to it. So let's uh, let's use the glue to kind of pat it down. I think that's the, the way forward. I have got close-up cam uh, with me today. So uh, when I have finished sticking these down, we've got a couple of processes to do yet. Um, I'll show it to you in close-up camera so that you can see them in all their glory. Yeah, that needs a bit of extra glue. Uh, Tracy is saying, um, I've got gloss medium, can I use that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Just um, what's going to be my advice for gloss medium? I think my extra bit of advice, uh, Tracy, is that you're going to need to really make sure that you mop up that excess glue at the end so that you don't end up with a glossy surface finish to your watercolour paper. I think that's my bit of advice of the day. So you can see I'm sort of wetting it and then blotting it. The wool is really proving to be quite tricky to get down, but sometimes the trickiest textures are the ones that give you the best results. So I'm gonna persevere. Uh, where else do I want some of that kind of, let's um, put some collage over collage. So let's get some of those wool textures in down here. Oh, I didn't put enough glue down, didn't put enough glue down. There we go, that's better. That's far too straight, so let's interfere with that a little bit. Curve it up, that's better. Poke that down. That's the uh, official technical word for it. A uh, bit of water, a bit of blotting. I think that will be okay. And then we need some over here, don't we? Uh, we want to distribute our collage materials both evenly and asymmetrically, which sounds like a contradiction, but you don't want to abandon an area of your painting with your collage materials because um, collage will draw the eye, texture always draws the eye, and so you don't want part of your picture kind of abandoned. That's horrible. <laughs> Let's remove that. I don't like that at all. Um, and I know you're going to say, yeah, but why? what makes you say that it's horrible, Ali? It's just an aesthetic. It's just me going, mm, don't like the look of that. Don't like the look of that. Let's do this with it instead. Is that better? Yes, it is. I know that's really daft, isn't it? There's no kind of rhyme nor reason to that whatsoever. But when it's you doing the creating, do you know what? You get to do what you like with it. If you think something looks rubbish, then you get to say you are in complete control of this. Um, I think I need another bit, but I think I need a bit that's a bit finer. There you go. That's bad English, isn't it? Um, let's uh, tear this up a little bit more. Let's try to get this a little bit finer. Uh, let's um, pull some of this up. There we go, that's better. Not quite so thick. Back in with the glue. Let's stick some of it down. Oh, go down. Some of it down here. So that we've got some sort of foliagey, leafy, grassy kind of things going on. Still don't like that one. Isn't that funny? Yep, yeah, don't like that. That one's too high. Pull that down a little bit. Mess about with it. Interfere with it. Oh, I've got this thing now. What have I got? Two over there, one over there, two up there. That's not good maths, is it? Let's have another one climbing up around the toadstool. No, I still don't like it. <laughs> no, it's going. It's leaving the building. Oh uh, dear, who'd have thought that you could have that discussion about sticking bits of wool down. Now we're going to go for the needle felting wool. And uh, for this, I mean, I could have probably just combed my dog. I would have probably got the same <laughs> type of texture, but I'd have been not such a popular dog owner. So for this, I'm going to tease a few bits of it away. And again, poke it down into the surface. It's going to be quite, oh, I like that. Uh, quite fibrous. Uh, let's interfere with it a bit more. Let's pull some of it out and away. Use our glue. I'm gonna go back and um, clean that up in a little bit. 
let's go back on. You can see how carefully I put those first few pieces of skeleton leaf now and how I've just kind of gone oh, to it. Let's just shove it down and see what happens. I have n I've never used needle felting wool in a mixed media piece before. So I don't have any clue at all about how my colour is going to react on this, what uh, it's going to do to watercolour, how difficult it's going to be to paint over the top of. Who knows? Who knows? Hey, good morning, Thyra. Nice to have you here. Uh, what else we got? Now, um, I've kind of, I'm a bit texture heavy down there and a bit uh, texture poor here. So let's stick some of that needle felting wool in there. Uh, let's tap it down with the matte medium. Let's cover up some of the ends of that wool because I had a bit of a hissy fit with that a minute ago. Let's get that stuck down and let's put a last little bit up in the top right hand corner. Uh, no, that's too much. I mean, it looks like I've been shedding across my uh, desk this morning. Let's get that in and stuck down. And then I need to go back in with some water and just clean up some of these patches of excess medium because I don't want them necessarily to repel my watercolour. Actually, wetting it helps me to see where the some of the textures are too. So I think that's okay. We have to do a little bit of a dance. And you can see where some of those uh, glossy elements are. You can see exactly what I'm talking about in terms of there being a little bit excess adhesive. But I have another option at my disposal. I don't want to leave them just like that. I want to add another dimension to them. And for that, I'm going to use this stuff. This is watercolor ground. Um, and uh, I'm just going to uh, stop a second because Anne has just asked a question. Does it make any difference if you're using natural texture, wool, cotton, etc., or synthetic like acrylic in terms of them taking the paint? Yes, absolutely. I have absolutely no idea how the wool is going to accept the paint in relation to uh, the more natural materials. I'm going to guess that the wool is going to repel some of it. Um, and I'm guessing some of the kind of more absorbent uh, styles, certainly uh, like Trudy was saying with scrim and the like, they're going to accept the colour. But what I should get is a nice mismatch of texture. Um, Trudy is saying, is needle felting wool a synthetic material? I wonder what natural wool fibres would react like. This is uh, merino wool. Um, you can get synthetic uh, needle felting wool, but this is proper stuff, proper, proper stuff. Um, so this is a natural um, material. But of course, there's all sorts of things. I mean, if you used dog hair, I should ask my mum, shouldn't I? She's got a golden retriever. I could uh, groom one of her dogs and add that into one of the pictures. Who knows what that would turn up like. Now you could dry this, I'm not going to, because uh, for the purposes of today's demonstration there's absolutely no need to. Just in the few uh, last minutes that we have, I want to include this stuff. So this is watercolour ground. This is designed to be used as a primer for watercolour painting. In other words, I could paint this onto a piece of plastic and where plastic would normally repel watercolour. Um, putting watercolour ground on the top means that it is going to accept the colour. I particularly like using this to push back some of my collage materials to add another dimension, to add another element into it. And uh, it just it's sort of a nice finishing part of this part of the process. This is titanium white, comes in a variety of um, colours. This is the Daniel Smith one. Yes, Tracy is saying uh, pick up sheep's wool when out walking. Yes, many a barbed wire fence uh, to be uh, plucked, Tracy. And Rosie is saying to my mum, watch out for your dogs, Liz. <laughs> this is the Daniel Smith watercolour ground. It is the watercolour ground that I particularly prefer to use. It is a consistency that I like. And the way that I'm going to apply it is with a palette knife. Um, a palette knife is the way that I like to apply it simply because it means I don't mess about with it too much. Now, the consistency that it is when it's liquid in the pot is one kind of texture. But actually, the consistency that happens around the edge of the pot, where it's a little bit thicker, is actually my texture of choice. 
and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to run it over the top of some of my textures very lightly almost as if I am grouting some of my textures in I'm going to end up covered in this stuff aren't I um, I will promise you I will show you this in the close-up camera when I am done you can see it a little more clearly there um, this will present um, a little bit more unification between my collage materials and my watercolour paper because it will hide some of them it will pull some of them forward I'm going to use the back of my palette knife to kind of make a nice uh, sort of stucco effect uh, Barbara is saying uh, sheep's wool would probably need to be well washed as it has lanolin and that would surely repel watercolour paint Barbara yes absolutely and of course you could try it with washing it and without washing it all of these things very experimental and very exciting Gwenda is saying that she's just bought some gold watercolour ground and can't wait to give it a go that's very exciting I've used a uh, gold watercolour ground very successfully on some sunflower paintings that I've done in the past works beautifully so I've got all of that texture going in I'm bringing it down a little bit so that um, I'm th sort of thinking about my composition at all times I've got quite a heavy element of items here so let's extend them down the page a little and then hopefully we'll get uh, some interesting things going on in the foreground I'm trying to bury the stem of that leaf into a little bit of watercolor ground so that it um, blends in a bit more I'm trying to not let my palette knife patterns uh, show too much I don't want it to look like I applied it with a palette knife I just want it to look as if um, it's very very textured indeed the watercolor ground over the top of the needle felting wool is an interesting texture and by interesting I mean no idea what's going to happen with it <laughs> that's half the fun isn't it I mean this might fail abysmally but uh, you know it, it's all got to be experimented with it's far too much fun to not be doing it and it's far too much fun to be worrying about what the end result is. Enjoy the process, not the final painting. Now over here, running out of room a little bit on my watercolour paper. Uh, I'm going to do a few sort of scissory actions through my watercolour ground to simulate uh, some of those grasses and textures and things. And it would be really, really remiss of me to not include some watercolour ground at least on a few of my toadstools not all of them just a few of them I'm going to choose the larger ones because you would see more detail on them but again this way you've got a unification between what's going on in all elements of your painting so I'm using the edge there of my palette knife just to give a little bit of texture let's uh, tap that knife on as well I do like that kind of sticky mark that you get with um, dropping the palette knife down and lifting off now the danger with these types of techniques is that you want to go on for hours and so you have to draw a line and you have to say to yourself right Ali stop now but of course <laughs> Can always find something else to do I'm gonna pop a little bit of watercolor ground just a cheeky little bit of watercolor ground in between some of these toadstools as well because I don't want them to look like they don't have any connection with the background so we'll pop a little bit of watercolor ground in between them to give that a, a sort of a nod and uh, then hopefully it won't look like they're on a backdrop uh, Tracy Anne is asking a question that Ali D has very kindly uh, answered on my behalf how is the ground different to gesso Ali is absolutely right gesso acrylic painting gesso does slightly repel your watercolor paint so you have to be super careful with it whereas the watercolor ground is designed to accept the watercolor paint I use all of them uh, when I'm uh, doing a painting um, I'd sometimes mix more than one in the same picture so there we go I think I'm going to call it a day there um, let's pop the lid on this before it all dries up under the lights and let's get a uh, close-up camera involved so that uh, you can see some of these things 
in a bit more delicious detail. Here we go then. So you can see where I've got my skeleton leaf. You can see uh, my bits of wool kind of creeping up, that very heavy texture that's in there. Can you see that? It's really very three-dimensional. Is what's over the uh, needle felting wool. I'm going to use my finger as well. Fingers are very useful. I know some of you don't like sticking your finger back in your work, but I do tend to find that if you want to poke something down or move it or uh, do something else to it, a finger works wonders. You can also create some interesting little sort of stucco textures with it. Now I don't like that bit of wool. I really don't like that bit of wool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish about for my scissors and I'm going to give it a haircut. So I'm going to lift it up, cut it, pull it away. Just because I, I didn't like the direction it was going. No other reason. That's better. like that a bit more. Let's just separate it out a little bit so it's not quite so rigid at the end. That's better. There we go. Uh, need to cover up the ends of that bit of skeleton leaf. What we got going on over here? Yeah, let's uh, tap my finger back in it. Actually, it's drying already. That's how warm it is in my studio. Under all these lights and cameras, the poor watercolour ground is um, fighting for survival. So let's move our way up to the top of these things to get that little bit of sort of stucco quality. But it's going to be so interesting, isn't it? Isn't it going to be interesting how the watercolour is going to react to some of these textures? Now I'm covered in watercolour ground and super aware of the fact that I really don't want to rub my nose right now because I don't want to sign off from today's broadcast with watercolour ground. Uh, now, Jilly is saying something that I can't pronounce. It may be a Cortinarius elation fungi. Wow, I really hope it is, because that's a hell of a name, isn't it? Isn't that awesome? Um, Carol is saying that she's got to disappear off to the dog groomers and is going to ask her to bag her some um, hair, um, but she's going to be following along later and having a go. Lovely to have you with us, Carol. Let's so get so that I can see you all. I hope that that was uh, an interesting demonstration. All of the inspiration for this has come from this theme that I've got for the All Aboard Artists this month, the In the Garden theme that we have. And don't forget to pop back over to the Learning to Paint website, not the Facebook page, the website to learn more about it. Now I have some other news for you as well. Um, at the end of July 2022, at the end of this month, I will be back up at SAA headquarters to lead a workshop uh, called Rufus Fox, which is watercolour and pastel in combination. You can either join me uh, live in the studio so that you can paint along with me during the day, Pop over to the SAA's community website to book your tickets. Or, of course, you can watch me in real time, either live or via catch-up on the same day. It's uh, entirely up to you how you can, um, interact with that. But it's going to be a good one. I've not done a Fox portrait for a very, very long time. And don't forget about the All Aboard Artists, that incredible creative community. We had some All Aboard members in the room with us this morning. They're hopefully very excited about everything the month has ahead. And there it says at the bottom, go back over to www.learningtopaint.co.uk and find the All Aboard Artists in the menu. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to allow this to dry. I'm not going to do a thing to it before next week. Next week, I think, I'm not entirely sure what it is that we're going to do with it. Might have a bit of ink work on it. Might just go straight in with the watercolours. I will prop it up on the side and I will have a think about what it is that I would like to do with it. Um, you've got lots of things coming up this week. Um, I've got the final of the Artist of the Year judging tomorrow. I'm very excited to see those finalists. Um, we've also got a live demonstration on the Artist Demo Days page on Thursday. Don't forget, you can catch all of the Artist Demo Days team live at Patchings. We would love to see you in person. We've seen you online for so long, we would love to see you. You can book workshops with us there. I will also be demonstrating for Search Press and for Hannah Mule as well. So I will be dashing around like a mad thing. July is going to be a very, very busy month for me, but I am looking forward to it immensely. Don't forget Technic Tuesday, same time next week, 9am. Until then, take lots of care of yourselves and I will see you very soon. <laughs> Bye everybody.